Hello, Feisty Feeder fans, and welcome to another Saturday edition of Feisty Fridays. If you watched last week, I know I mentioned that I was going to do chicken tenders, but I changed my mind because I can't. So we've all had happy accidents in the kitchen. You don't have to be a chef to have a happy accident. So I'm going to show you one of the dishes that is my favorite happy accident and it is caramelized cauliflower and uh you understand i think you know where i'm going with the whole happy accident thing yeah i got a little distracted one day after putting some cauliflower on the uh stove to steam and uh well i almost burnt it but it turned out to be one of the best things i've ever had so that's what i'm going to show you how to do but try not to forget about it like i did you want to start off with a beautiful, beautiful head of cauliflower. And we're going to chop it up into somewhat larger bite-sized pieces so we can get a good caramelization on it uh, in the pan without it overcooking. So you're going to want to use a nonstick or a cast iron pan for this. Um, just gets a better caramelization when you're cooking. Uh, so you want to have a lid for it as well. And you have your option of cheesy or not cheesy. So I've grated up some really beautiful Parmigiano Reggiano. And uh, I am going to throw this in at the very end. So we're gonna turn our pan onto medium heat and I'm gonna use a little heavy cream because uh, I'm keto. And so this is also, this is a great recipe for uh, my keto people out there. Now, if you're lactose intolerant or you don't want the extra fat, but you do want the extra flavor, let me tell you. Uh, you can use some veggie stock or some chicken stock if you haven't made any beautiful veggie stock, which I showed you how to. Uh, you can uh, do that and use some of that. So I'm going to put about, well, maybe not even, maybe like a quarter of a cup at the most in here. Um, you don't have to use that much. If you want to go lower fat, you can also throw in, um, split it with a little bit of water uh, or stock as well. You can use a little bit of both. Um, so what we're going to do is uh, I'm going to put in my cauliflower and I don't want to, I'm not going to use all of this because I don't want to overcrowd my pan. And then I'm going to just sprinkle a little salt. I'm not going to do salt bay. Um, and then a little bit of pepper. Okay, I'm kidding. A lot of pepper. I love a lot of pepper. So we're going to cover that. So we're just going to let that go. I can't tell you how long it's going to take. Um, it depends on how big you cut your cauliflower. So like I said, happy accident. You don't want to walk away for, you know, 20 minutes um, and go, I don't know, have a disco interlude. You can see that it's pretty undercooked still. It's not turning translucent, but you can see right there that it's starting to brown a little bit. So we're going to add a little bit more liquid to it and put the top back on. All right. Now, keeping your eye on the prize and the cauliflower at the same time, you can see that that liquid is drying up and our cauliflower is really starting to caramelize. You want the cauliflower to start getting a little slightly translucent. And it's at this point where I'm going to just give it some stirring. Make sure that liquid is all around that pan because that helps deglaze and uh, caramelize that 
that uh, cauliflower. Now the cauliflower was steaming for about 10 minutes. And see that? Well, that's what happened to my entire pan of cauliflower when I was trying to cook it that one time. And uh, the entire, I know it looks burnt, but it's actually just really caramelized from the sugars in the, um, in the vegetable coming out. And at this point, you can also like deglaze your pan a little bit and get those extra lovely caramelized bits off the bottom. Might not be the prettiest dish, but I can guarantee you it's tasty as all hell. At this point, you can let it sit again for a couple minutes because we want that liquid to completely evaporate and it start to caramelize a little bit more. And also, how dark you get it is depending on your taste. Um, you know, the darker you get it or the crispier you get it, um, that's my preference. But you might not want it. Like, this might be perfect for you. You can always just take a little piece out of the pan and, and try it. See if you want it caramelized a little bit more. So, and when you stir it, try to get it, you know, evenly distributed, you know, throughout that pan. Just so you know, right now this process is taking about 10 minutes. So this is a good point to go ahead and try a little piece, adjust your seasoning if you need. And I'm actually going, this is where I want it. And I'm actually going to turn my, turn my burner off. And I'm going to dump in my cheese. And you can use whatever kind of cheese you want. I prefer Parmesan. You can use cauliflower, I mean cauliflower. Uh, you can use um, cheddar if you want, whatever you like. Then I'm just gonna stir that around. And I tasted a piece, it needed a little bit more salt, so I'm gonna just dump in a little bit more salt. And you know, the whole idea is just right here is just to get your cheese melted and coated onto the uh, cauliflower. Now, I also like cauliflower and uh, fresh herbs. So this is actually just a mix of um, some fresh thyme and some fresh parsley. And I'm just gonna put that in there. And you can just transfer it to your serving bowl or do what I do most of the time and just eat it immediately out of the pan. Voila. At this point, you could even sprinkle some extra cheese right on top of it. All right, Feisty Feeder fans, I hope you enjoy your uh, caramelized cauliflower and we'll see you next week when I promise I'll do my amazing chicken tenders. I know it's simple, but they're so good. Even your kids will eat them.